Welcome to DKDocs.tv, where we are honored to show you the first showing of the production Cancer Sherpa. I'm James, and today we're going on an unforgettable journey about a remarkable person named Cancer Sherpa. In this program, we're going to dive into the production of the independent film and a passion project that took 10 years to create. This film was made possible through the support of BPC Media and iFocus. In the chair, we have the pleasure of talking to some key individuals behind the film. And we'll explore how the team tackled the challenge of making a movie in the majestic Himalayan mountains. And through these interviews, we will gain a deeper understanding of the story of Kansha Sherpa, the struggle and triumph, and the significance of Sherpa people in the world of mountain climbing. Bruno, can you, what was your role in the production of uh, Kansha Sherpa? It's my tightly friendship with Kansha Sherpa and his wife. I went up to the mountain for 25 years ago and were there two times in a year, even with my family, I was there. So after some while, Kansas said, how can we do something for the shepherds? I said, I don't know. He said, can you write a book? I said, no, I can't write a book. But maybe we could tell a story in another way. And what about the story in particular of um, uh, Kansas Sherpa got, got you hooked into it? I met this guy, Bruno Jørgensen. I met him in, uh, in, when I was staying in Nepal. We met at the temple where I also go, and um, a Buddhist temple. And he told me about Kansas Sherpa, and, uh, and that, uh, that he was looking for a way to get the story about Kansas' life out. And uh, after thinking about it, I suggested making a documentary. So when did you get involved in the production of Kanta Sherpa? I was contacted by my friend Sangpo, who was the director of the movie, who had this big project coming up and asked if I would like to participate in, in filming in Nepal. How did you work together with the film crew to make everything work? Uh, my job was, when we were there to take the film, was to go in front. So we could supply people when they come up there. My work was not very much about how to do the film or anything because I had no knowledge about that. Mm. No knowledge. I can see the pictures. Mm. It was a different experience throughout the production view. It was a different uh, experience for what I usually do. So during the um, challenging times, how did you resolve it? How did you overcome it? It was a very difficult environment to be in, it was very cold, it was, there was not a lot of food from what you're used to. Yeah. There is. So as an independent filmmaker, how did you get the finances for uh, such a big production? It was my company, it means my freelance working that paid 70-80% of it and and Nikolai Sko uh, that paid the rest, plus yeah, 10-15% that was donated by companies and private individuals. So how did you shape the narrative of the story and decide which elements to use? I wanted to, to show the big difference between uh, the environment where Kansa Sherpa lives and the environment where his uh, grandchild lives in Kathmandu. So all the shots in Kathmandu, I used uh, tail shots, which means it's a very narrow perspective uh, and the background is all very tight and I used a lot more wide angles in the mountains uh, to to show um, the world where cancer lives. What methods did you use to portray the scenery? I chose from, right from the beginning that we should not have a narrator on the on the film because it gives like uh, in my opinion it uh, makes us look down on a certain people like uh, like we are not a part of them so it was very important for me to it was told by the Sherpas themselves. What got you attracted to the idea of shooting this script in the first place? I've always felt it fascinating about these uh, different small cultures and Sherpas. We haven't heard much about Sherpas. We always hear about the mountaineers. What was your vision for this movie when you were producing it either the start or the finish? Like, did your vision for the movie change? No, it didn't really change, but as it was also more about putting a little more focus on the Sherpas mm -hmm. compared to the, to the mountaineers, because it's like 
The Sherpas do this for work and uh, the mountain is holy for them, mm -hmm. where the mountaineers come for the experience of managing to climb it. Paul, how did you approach the sound mixing for Kamla Sherpa? Well, he has uh, a lovely voice and he was well recorded. Uh, his microphone was a little bit too close to his throat. Um, so it was a very kind of deep sound, which was good, but I had to thin it out a little bit. Mm. And what was the approach for mixing the entire production? What was your mindset? What you're, what you're creating, hopefully, is basic vignettes of, uh, of the shots that you know that the director has. And so you're working with then little story frames, story uh, uh, storylines. So uh, what you're doing is you're um, making sure that the sound is good, that you can hear everything that he's saying, that the tone is still rich, uh, that there are no glitches, because sound can get corrupted along the way at some stage. And how do you find the right balance of the music, dialogue, outside noise and scenery? Um, well, where the scenery wasn't there, we'd have to recreate, you know, the, like um, uh, if the cows were going by and there, there weren't enough cowbells, <laughs> <laughs> we always need more cowbell, as they say, yeah. um, we would have to find that or find it from the recordings of uh, the same, the same recordings, but of a different, different time or whatever, and fly that in. Uh, which means that you just take the sound and just move it along the time frame. Uh, so the the scene, the 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 music of the environment, we would have to make sure that it matched the scene, um, and then it's basically just balance of making sure that you can hear everything that the the Kanch is talking about, or his wife, or anyone else in the film, in the documentary, and. Just balance it and just use your ears, you know, of what, is, what seems real. You know. How much collaboration was there between you and the rest of the team overall in the production? Not very much. Uh, obviously from the directors, from the director, uh, being very precise about what he wanted and uh, how it should be. Uh, and then leaving me to, to fill all that space up. Um, and that's a, obviously a, the biggest one. Uh, the editor, the editors who have been involved, um, the taking what they say on board and dealing with it, you know, because I was like the lowest, not the lowest, but, you know, mm. the main thing is the visuals, the, making sure that everyone can hear it, getting rid of all the, the bad sound, uh, fixing it so that it, it, it all, it's all smooth. Um, and then, of course, when Jürgen got involved, uh, I mixed his... Uh, his uh, balances between his, all the instruments that he'd recorded. Um, <clears throat> doing that and listening to him saying, oh, that's not right, you know, a bit more of this and doing that for him uh, until it was all fine. And then it's just, it's almost like making a, a concept album where you have the music and then you have some speaking and then you have something else and the music fades down to almost nothing, but it's still there to give it to keep the, the feel going and then rising. Were there any other collaborators that you worked with for the sound and the score? Um, there was a, 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 a Nepal, Nepalese guy called uh, Nawan, who was related uh, to the family, I think. Um, he, we recorded in Malmo uh, four songs, um, which were lovely. Uh, and we did that a day and then we mixed them and uh, they definitely, I think they're the end credits and they, they come uh, in uh, 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 intro credits and outro credits, I think. And there, I think there's a, a couple of moments where they appear in the song as well. But they were really good, really nice. And he's a lovely player. So Jorgen, what was your role in the production of um, Kanja Sherpa? I'm the composer of the music. I'm the film composer. So what I do is music underscore, you can say. Not exactly the theme music in this one, but uh, that's my profession to do music for films. And how was it to create the music for this film specifically? Uh, was there a certain process you follow with these types of um, documentaries or was it different? 
Every film is its own body, its own soul, and uh, this one was very special in... The story is so uh, exceptional. It's um, a portrait of wonderful people living closely with the mountain, uh, Mount Everest, and, and those surroundings, and of course the, the story of the original uh, Tenzing, uh, Hillary expedition and how Kansha Sherpa participated in this and um, for me this was a tremendous experience to be able to contribute with my music and to, um, how do you say, um, hopefully uh, create parts of the expression of the story and the movie through the music. Um, and you worked with Narang Sherpa to help make the uh, score he wrote uh he sent uh specific uh pieces of music music cues as we say in film production and as such we worked together or our music are both represented in the movie we didn't collaborate uh, but the music is there i think it does a wonderful job and i think it adds to to the whole character and to the specific um, expression of the movie and i really like uh, the thought that uh, he has uh, contributed to become and is now part of uh, the expression of the movie. So, so in that way, yes, we collaborated, but we, wouldn't, we weren't sitting next to each other and, and composing or recording music. And what were the biggest like, conflicts and challenges throughout the production process? We had several big co uh, problems uh, that we encountered. The, the first real big problem was when we came out there and we had planned everything, uh, how we would shoot and operate, and then we have to reconstruct uh, everything because it was not going to happen the way we, we planned it. Yeah. And then, the thing, and then uh, later on when we came home, there was again the language barrier. We had to have it translate, uh, translated, uh, what they were saying, three times. And the third? And the, and the third, uh, final, was to do the editing. It was also edited three times uh, by two different editors. Yeah. And how would your experience of this production affect your future um, productions? I started this project 15 years ago when I was 35 and I'm 50 now. So, uh, and mainly due to lack of fundings, it took that long time. So uh, I would say uh, in the future I will be, I have many projects I would love to do, but uh, funding will come first. Yeah. And how did you work in collaboration with us, the rest of the um, film crew specifically, um, especially people like Paul Schroeder, uh, Mike Hellstrom and Meta Carter? How did that collaboration work? Actually, I think the... Uh, the idea that I should do the music came up through Meta. So I'm very happy to have met her and that she introduced me to Morten Sangpo. Uh, and then of course the music is part of the post-production, as we say in film production. So I wasn't in Tibet, unfortunately, yet. I haven't been there. But, but uh, my job is at home in my studio, uh, where I sit and I watch the movie over and over and over and over and over. And I really do everything I can to get the feel of the movie, to get the feel of the characters, to get to know them, to uh, get a feel of the atmosphere, the surroundings, the whole um, spirituality uh, around the mountains, Chomolungma, I think as they call uh, Mount Everest, which is really sacred to them and, and important in their lives. And, and as the story tells, uh, it's, it's really, it's literally uh, life and death. Mm. Uh, so. So I'm part of the post-production and my music is um, introduced in the last part of the film production process, which is a long uh, road in itself. My collaboration with Paul Schroeder, the, the sound designer, was, was also a, a wonderful experience apart from the other collaborators. Because when I deliver the music, then uh, it's up to the sound designer if the music is heard or if it's not heard. And not only is it heard, as I experienced the movie, but also he enhanced it so that it sounds uh, how I would really prefer it to sound. So I'm very grateful for that. So what was the biggest challenge you had over the course of the production? 
There is this scene where you see, we see uh, footage from the original movie, uh, from the Tensing uh, Hillary uh, expedition, and and it's very very dramatic. And uh, there is uh, a voiceover in the original movie, and there is music. So I'm the composer, and I'm doing music on music, and. Um, as far as I can see and hear my own music, I think I succeeded. It's still in the movie, so somebody else also thinks it's appropriate. And uh, in a way, it's a, it's, a, it's a time capsule. Not only what we see and, of course, the, the, the bravery of, of the Sherpas and, and all uh, participants in, um, in the original expedition, but, but also for me as a musician and composer to a company, a music that is already there. So that was quite a challenge and, uh, and, and quite a fun one too, actually. How did you collaborate with uh, Morden and the rest of the sound crew on the production? The collaboration uh, in general was uh, seamless and I was really happy with, uh, with Morden, with the way he approached uh, this production. He knows so much and travels frequently uh, to, uh, to the Himalayans and um, I tried to grasp as much as I could from, from him, from not only what he told about it and, and the movie, of course, uh, the pictures, the images, but, but also to try and sense something of how he lives that life, part of in, in Denmark or Scandinavia and, and part of it far away, uh, because um, this is how I built my music. I try, when I have the feeling that the music comes to me from the screen, which is a mind game of course but but this is when i know i'm i i have absorbed as much information i can about the movie and the story and the characters and collaborating with um morton was a a, a wonderful um, help in uh, in that process for me to to do my best which is what i always strive for so i'm very very happy with that what was the biggest moment of success or of pride that you experienced over the over the course of the production it was when i saw it was finished after so many years cutting i'm looking forward to see when the film is out at the 29th also i know a lot of people who is waiting for it really waiting for it and would you work on a similar project in the future no i i don't have the age for that anymore <laughs> So what do you think the viewers will take away from watching um, Kansas Sherpa? I hope that they, of course there is the mountaineers and the trekking people and some of the Himalaya Buddhist people who will be very interested in this movie. But I think for the general uh, public, um, I hope that they will think about their own culture, their own language, what uh, it means to lose your language and your culture. Yeah. And why? They should preserve it wherever they are, mm. the viewer. Yeah. So if you were to make this production again, what would be your first step? It was to ensure some kind of funding. So how are you collaborating with the other members of the crew? We didn't have a full budget for everybody, for salary and stuff. So um, the col collaboration with the others uh, came about because it's people I know and who, who had the heart to do it. So what did you learn over your experience making the story of Kansas Sherpa into a film? Yeah, first of all, I think that I have learned that, that the, the real world is much more interesting than uh, fiction. And furthermore, I will add on that uh, I think that uh, all around the world we have to document and uh, preserve our cultures and uh, differences because when we lose them, they will not come back. Thank you for joining us on the captivating journey into the production of Cancer Sherpa. We hope you enjoyed the insights into this remarkable story and the challenges faced by the dedicated team that made it. A special thanks to our guests, including director Morden Sangpo Boric, producer Nikolai Schult Larsen, screenwriter Bruno Jorgs, sound engineer Paul, and the composer Jorgen, for sharing all of their experiences and expertise. And remember, filmmaking is a collaborative art form that requires passion, perseverance, and a deep understanding of the subject matter. Cancer Sherpa stands as a testament to the power of independent film production and the dedication of all the team and crew involved. Stay tuned for more inspiring stories and behind the scenes glimpses into the world of filmmaking. I'm James, and thank you.